Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn this data set yeah, into a report on Microsoft Word, yeah, because you will need to write this kind of thing to report your uh, research result in either a paper or in your thesis, chapter four of your thesis, yeah. Okay, so now suppose that you have done a research, yeah, in a small scope, of course, uh, you got this data, students writing score, and 95 students became your participants in your research, yeah. Now what we are going to do is to summarize this data so that it is presentable. It is well represented in your written report. Okay, so step number one is to look for the minimum, maximum range, and then we decide the classes and width, okay? Minimum score is, as you know, the formula is min, open brackets. That's it, that's the minimum score. And then we use the formula of max, I'm sure I don't need to explain further about minimum and maximum because you know this already. And then the range of score is going to be the subtraction of uh, maximum value. Sorry, um, subtraction, yeah. So maximum minus uh, minimum. That's going to be the range and the value is 64. Now, the next thing is we need to dis uh, decide the classes, yeah. Uh, the classes are the interval of your data. We need to decide uh, how many classes oh, we distribute our range of scores into. Yeah, In this case, maybe the, the ideal number is eight because 64 can be divided into eight and the result would be, so the, the width, yeah. The width will be the result of calculation, uh, the range divided by the classes and the result will be eight. The width here is the distance between the upper and lower, sorry, not level, but limit, yeah? So it's the distance between the upper and lower limit. Later on, we will set the upper limit, yeah, batas atas and lower limit, batas bawah, for each of your classes. Um, should it be always eight? The answer is no. But it's good if it is between five classes to 10 classes. Well, suppose you want to make your table shorter. So you want to make only five classes. Uh, it's also possible, five or six classes maybe. But here the result would be in comma, yeah. And what's the effect if you have a comma here, non-integer non value here, yeah, because integer value is a value without comma, so it's without fraction. Angka bulat itu integer, yeah. So uh, we, we tend to want to have a, an integer value here, but if it is impossible for you to generate an integer value, it's also okay, because later on we can do roundup. We will use the round roundup formula, okay? But of course, we will discuss it in a separated session, not here. Uh, for this example, let's just use eight to make it easy. So once you have got these five items uh, clear, yeah? And then the second step would be uh, deciding the lower limit, LL is lower limit, and UL, upper limit of each of your classes, yeah? Remember, we are going to make eight classes, yeah? So let's say these are the classes. It's right here. Okay, this is seven, so one more. Okay, let's decide the lower level. Of course, the lowest value is, sorry, the lowest score of your, uh, in your data is statistics. So let's, let's just put this 
as the lowest score here, uh, the starting point would be 36. And then uh, class number one, uh, the lower level, sorry, the lower limit would be 36 and the upper limit would be, would be what? The answer is 36 plus this one, this value, yeah? Plus the distance between the upper and lower limit. Now, because uh, this is what we're going to do all the time and 8 here, uh, M8 here, is a constant value. So we need to press the F4, F4, yeah, in order to lock it because uh, later if we drag it, we want it to be the same, uh, the same about cell, yeah, the same cell. Uh, attached there instead of going to M9 and 10, M10, M11 and so on. Because you know when we drag it, it will be progressing, right? The number will be progressing. So now the second lower limit would be the upper limit of this, right? So yeah, the same as this. So the second class will start from 44 to 2 I guess we can just copy paste this formula from the previous one okay so once you have two rows like this you can just block this row the second row and then drag it all the way down until 8 so there you get um, the classes one from 1 to 8 yeah the category in which your uh, in which the scores are put into, you get get what I mean, right? So, berapa nantinya kita akan menghitung berapa orang yang nilainya itu di rentang 36 sampai 44, berapa orang yang di rentang 44 sampai 52, and so on, okay? Until 100. Okay, good. I think we can just uh, hide it for now, these two columns, and then. Uh, the third step would be frequency, yeah. Uh, so we will count how many uh, students, how, how many participants have th uh, the score in between 36 and 44, in between 44 and 52 and so on, okay. So in order to do this, we will use the frequency formula. So value, frequency, uh, open bracket, and then you want to block all of this, everything, uh, all the items in your data, block it all. Yeah, see this, uh, this clue? First is data array, and then the second one is bin array. Here we will use the array formula of frequency. Yeah, so after you have blocked all the data array, uh, in my case, it's I3 to I97 because we have 95 items in the data. And then it's comma, yeah, in my computer setting, it, it uses comma. I don't know, in your, in your laptop, in your computer, maybe uh, you need to use the semicolon. Just, just follow the instruction, uh, the clue given by Excel here, okay? And then the next thing we have to input is the bins array. Bins array is the the numbers of uh, the values in the upper limit. Okay, so just block the upper limit and then close the bracket. But don't press enter yet because what we need to press for an array formula is Control Shift and Enter all together. Again, Control Shift and Enter all together. So the frequency would be this when you drag it down oh so it's uh, there is a triangle on this corner so i guess we need to start again let's start again now you need to block everything first yeah before you type the formula so let's start again with uh, equal frequency open bracket block all the scores in your data set Okay, and then comma, the bins array. Again, the bins array is the upper limit values. 
close the bracket and then press control shift enter together okay this way we don't have the small triangle in that corner okay so we have got the frequency for every class here and to make sure that this is the correct number we now have to prove it by using the sum formula so let's uh, sum this 95 right we have 95 um, participants 95 samples in your data and that is correct okay once you have got the frequency correct you can go on to the next step which is calculating the percentage okay uh, to calculate the percentage you know how how to do it right uh, it's equal and then this number the number of uh, the total number of items in first class divided by the total number of you know everything in your data and then times 100 that will be uh, that will provide you the value of percentage but before this is a constant value let's press f4 f4 dulu ya not to make it uh, change later on when we drag the formula all the way down okay and there we have it all the percentages and let's see if our calculation is correct by summing up everything in your percentage if the result is 100 then it's correct okay now we have it we have got it correct and uh, almost almost finished but not yet now the next step is to count the cumulative percentage yeah right so the next thing we will do is to calculate the cumulative percentage how to do that we will use uh, the sum formula but it's a bit more complex here uh, because we, we we want to sum the progress of the percentage yeah so if this is uh, if the, the first percentage is 7.37 plus 9.47 what's the result so that's what we call the progress of the percentage here that's what a uh, cumulative percentage means so uh, we will use this formula sum and then open brackets and then we just block the first frequency add it to the same item there and then divide it by because the total number is 95 and then times 100 to make it a percentage but don't forget because we will start the the accumulation from the very first uh, very first value here seven so we make it constant value by pressing f4 okay f4 there and then s11 also we have to press f4 there to lock it so that later when we drag it it will not change there you are the the formula and then drag it all the way down there until it reaches 100%. So this is the, the cumulative percentage is 100%. Here you have got it correct. Okay. Right. Very good. Uh, we're, what we're trying to make here is the frequency distribution table, right? And the items to, to create a frequency distribution table is, sorry, not this one is number you know number is uh, just the classes they're the same so we can just copy paste and then the scores score range yeah the range from uh, lower limit to the upper limit so rentang skornya untuk setiap kelas itu berapa so we want to copy paste from here and there yeah to help us to make us easier we can use this formula concatenate okay just it's just to rewrite whatever there uh, whatever we will have this here and if we want to add something else like a dash 
gitu ya. So it will make 36 sampai 44. And to make that you just um, type this formula. You see? O3 is where the lowest uh, lower limit is and then P3 is where you have the upper limit and it's separated by a dash. And the result would be like this. 36 sampai 44. And you can just drag it. So it will make you easier. You don't have to retype it on your own. Okay. And here is the frequency distribution table. We have got it done. Yeah. And once it is done, you can take this and put it in uh, whatever your paper or in your chapter four of your thesis. Yeah. You copy and paste from Excel. It's done. And then uh, what you need to do next is to provide some, well, narration, I would say uh, explanation of this table. Yeah, so, so your readers will understand what the table is about. Okay, looks nice, right? Okay, uh, the next thing is to create the histogram out of your table, yeah? And to make it histo histogram data uh, presentation will consist of the score and the frequency. So we need to block these two rows, yeah? Only the numbers, okay? And then click insert and click the type of chart. And the most suitable one for our contacts here is this column chart so yeah i think i will go with the 3d one although you can also use the 2d okay now we have this bar chart actually this is a bar chart and later on we will transform it into a histogram but before that i want to change the title and make sure that uh what histogram it is, you need to make it clear. Yeah, that's why I put a, or provide a very clear title there. For example, students writing score histogram. Okay, and then to make uh, the information more comprehensive, I will add uh, the axis title for the horizontal axis here which is writing scores okay and i will add some caption also there in the vertical axis and it's going to be the frequency okay now that it's done but uh, remember that a histogram is different from a bar chart so in a bar chart there are spaces between the bars, but in for histogram, because uh, in by looking at the histogram, we we intend to see the data distribution, whether it is in normal shape or not, then we need to make the bars uh, without space. Yeah, how to do it uh, in the chart option, this small arrow. Uh, you click series one until there is an icon like this series option and to make it uh, sorry i'll move my picture uh, you have to make the gap width into zero so that it becomes a histogram like this okay okay i think that's it so now our histogram is ready and you can see the distribution. Is it bell shape? Yeah, it, it shapes okay. Yeah, good. Quite normal, normally distributed at a glance. And we can copy this, copy this histogram and paste it to your your report. Yeah, to allow your readers see your data distribution through histogram. Okay, so that's it. The steps. Now it's turn for you to practice making one of yours. Good luck.